How's it going everybody? So I have a pretty quick video for you guys today. My parents-in-law, parent-in-laws, parents-in-law, yeah. My parents-in-law are redoing their basement and asked me if I could cover these poles with wood to make them look more like square beams. I've never done beams like this before, but it seemed easy enough. So as it normally goes, I did a lot of research online before I started this project and I didn't really like any of the methods I found, so I sort of came up with my own version of it and that's what this video is about. There's a bunch of different ways of doing this, but honestly, I think this is probably the easiest. I started out by measuring the height of each of the poles and of course not all of them were the same size, so I ended up cutting everything to about a quarter inch shorter than I thought it needed to be, so I had a little bit of room to play with. Once I did that, I could bring everything downstairs and get everything ready to assemble. Now, if you're looking at this as more of a limited tools type project, you could easily do all of this with a handsaw with one of those cross cut saws. But I brought my miter saw over just to make this process a lot easier for me. I started out by using wood glue and brad nails to connect the two boards together, and then I could detach the wooden spacers. The point of these spacers is to properly space the outside of the box with the center of the pole. The other thing it does is it gives you a place where you can attach the box directly to the pole. The hardest part about getting the spacing correct is that you want to end up with about a quarter inch of play between the spacers and the pole. I'll show you why this is in a second. After connecting three of the boards together, I took the entire box and I lifted it into place. The first one I did was a really tight fit and it turned out to be a little bit tighter than it needed to be and I ended up having to refine all of the spacers before everything would fit together properly. Like I said, it's best to undersize these by about a quarter of an inch. After the box is in place and before you put the last board on, you need to fill all of the gaps with construction adhesive. The construction adhesive does two things. It will fill the gap between the spacer and the pole as well as make sure everything is firmly secured into place. I found out as I went through this process that I got a lot better at spacing everything appropriately. If you have a lot of poles to cover like I did, you should think about starting in the back and working your way towards the more visible poles because I had a lot of flaws to cover up in this first pole. After I was done with the project, I put a clamp on one of these poles so I could pull really hard on it and see how sturdy the pole was, and I wasn't able to move it no matter how hard I pulled. I was actually kind of impressed with how sturdy it was. Once I had the process of making these boxes down, I was able to repeat this across the rest of the poles. Once I got used to the process, it actually went pretty quick. It was just as easy as cutting the boards to length, bringing them down the stairs, attaching the three sides of the box together with the spacers, and then I could put the entire box into place, filling all of the spacers with the construction adhesive, and then I put the front of the box on with brad nails. Once I got the process down, it really only took me about 15 minutes per box. So if you want to, you can skip this next step, but I like to make things look a little bit cleaner when I'm done, so I took a little bit of wood glue and filled each one of the brad holes as well as some of the bigger cracks in the wood. If the cracks are too big, you can take a little bit of sawdust and mix it with some wood glue and make a putty. Please don't buy the cheap wood putty that you can get at the big box stores. That stuff is horrible. Just make your own and sand it down when you're done and trust me, it's gonna be a lot more sturdy. If you're gonna use something as fragile as wood putty, you might as well just be drywalling these. One really good way to make sure the glue doesn't spill back out of the small brad holes when you're filling them is to actually sand over the top of the hole and this takes a little bit of the sawdust off of the beams and it sort of pushes it into the hole to make the same kind of paste. Don't worry too much if you end up making a little bit of a mess with the wood glue. It's going to end up getting kind of all over the beam with this method. Uh, but what's going to happen is after the glue dries, you can come back and sand down the entire beam with a 120 grit. If you have it, the best tool for the job here is a random orbit sander. These things make the process so much quicker. But you could also do this by hand with a sanding block. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you guys today. There's still plenty of work to be done in this basement before the painting begins, so I'm not going to be able to show you the completely finished product, but hopefully this helps someone else out there who's trying to do the same thing. Anyway, let me know if this helps any of you. I'd love to hear if anybody's actually planning on doing this project. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all next time.